This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Community matters on a given Wednesday with Sharon Moriwaki. The uh, are you still the co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum? For a while, yes. Well, yes. Okay, we're still, I want we're that. still I want going that. with yeah, energy. Okay. Clean right, energy okay. is Clean still energy. our yeah. Well, she's been dedicated to that for how many years? It's a long yes, time already. Long time. And she has seen and shepherded um, you know, Hawaii's entry into renewable energy, and she's really an important person in that regard. But also she ran <laughs> uh, for the primary. She is running for Senate District 12 in the Hawaii State Senate, and that's why she's here today, so we can examine her reasons <laughs> for running and how it's been for her and what it's going to be like going forward. P.S. She won the primary. <laughs> this is the important thing. Yeah. This is really important. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Nice to be here, Jay. I, I miss being on uh, our uh, usual Wednesday show for clean energy, so it's yeah, nice to be yeah. here under different circumstances, of course. And we but, miss you, know. you intensely from <laughs> thank that you. show. Thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. But your shadow is the long shadow, <laughs> and, and it, it, it was the shadow that designed that show in the first place, and it is with us all the time when we do that show. So. Thank you. Anyway, so why in the world would a nice person like your own <laughs> self run for the state senate? What made you do that? Well, you know, this is what I keep telling people. It really depends on what your cause is, what your mission is. And for me, it started five years ago in Kaka'ako, as you know, with all the high-rise development. Uh, a lot of the buildings were, were getting through variances, building too close, too high, too densely, uh, not following the rules that were in place. And so um, the community got together, and we did topple that board, and we made changes to the law. But it's still wasn't the same because we still had to be vigilant about the senator who was supposedly representing us. And it didn't change. And I was really afraid that it would not change and we couldn't stand another four years. So um, it was based on that cause that we the people need to speak and you've got to stand up for what you believe in. Uh, and I felt that, that it was a time to, to step forward um, on behalf. Take it for the teas. You know? it's, a, it's a really a perfect <laughs> example of civic engagement. You know, it's uh, somebody who feels that um, the, the neighborhood ought to talk to government, ought to get government to respond. Somebody who goes out and, and garners um, a group, a coalition, if you will, from the neighborhood uh, and then runs for office uh, with them supporting her. It's really what Mr. Smith Goes to Washington is all about. <laughs> I mean, it's perfect civic engagement in my observation, and I'm so glad you, so glad you did, really. Well, it, it was a challenge. I, I didn't know what I was in for, the amount of work that's involved and what it takes and what it costs to do it, uh, but I'm glad I did. I, I met a lot of very good people in the community, smart people, committed people, want to be connected people, but have never had the opportunity. So. It's exciting. It's yeah. very exciting. Yeah, I, I watched you, and you, you know, you were, you really enjoyed it. You, you loved I meeting did. people. I did. There's a psychic benefit in that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've that's... campaigned that way, not on my own behalf, <laughs> but and I know what it means to knock on somebody's door and introduce yeah. yourself to walk, you know, know. To walk the neighborhood. That really is important. It's you know, I, I've done it for so many people, um, and it's different when you do it for yourself. I mean, you're you're the product, and you're selling yourself. You're you're very vulnerable. Uh, I remember some of the, the, the doors I knocked on and, you know, people said, go away, what are you selling, you know? <laughs> and you say, it's me, I'm selling me, I'm just ready for the Senate, I'm just here personally introduce myself, and they open the door and say, well, nobody came to talk to me before, you know, and, and so you start a conversation, a relationship, so um, very interesting, I, yeah. I really, I did it. I, you know, I would have guessed you'd be perfect for this because you're so relatable and you do engage with people and, you know, you're, you're likable. And so you, if you knock on the door, it's hard for them to, to, to shut it in your face. And it's easy for you to have a conversation where you try to tell them who you are. 
<clears throat> and that's, yeah. I think that's the psychic benefit of it. You're connecting with someone who you haven't connected with before, who you probably wouldn't connect would with except for the fact. Before. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, true. Yeah. That's true. But there's yeah. a lot of people to talk to there's in this district. There's district 12 runs all the way from Kaka'ako to Waikiki and what, up into? Up into Makali, Mo'ili'ili, Maka Oh, it's a huge Sheridan, district. Yes. And this is really the heart of the city. It is. It is the urban core, basically. Yeah. yeah. And it's very diverse. There are three, basically three separate, like you mentioned, three separate neighborhoods, communities that are different, quite different. They're diverse. Yeah, so you have to reach people in all kinds of situations. And there are different issues in the different neighborhoods. Um, and you have to do a lot of walking. Some people go out of their way to get a little exercise, eh, Sharon? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, you know, there's only 30% of the district that, that is walkable. So it's 70% condo dense. Well, you can't get you into condos. You can't condos. get into them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got to find different means of getting to the condo dweller, um, who I think uh, sometimes are too isolated. They don't know the issues because no one gives them information and they get a lot of junk mail, so they won't read it. <laughs> so I, I think the, the real challenge is to let condo owners know that they're part of the community, and they have a voice, and they really should be much more aware of what's happening and get more engaged. Yeah, sure. You know? I yeah. mean, we want people to, to be engaged and to vote. You know, we had 38% voting in this last election day. It's not enough. Um, so I mean, that raises a very interesting question because the state more and more is condos. Condos have security. Um, somebody walking the streets, you know, is not going to be able to get in, um, and they're not going to hear what you have That's to say. Right. How do we fix that? How do we, how do we, you know, make a connection between the people who live in the condos and the, the candidates? How do we do that? Well, you know, that's what the challenge was for me, and what I've done is a couple of things. One, just can't, that's where all my expenses were, send out the mailers. Hopefully, people will read it. And my mailers were um, identifying issues that I heard in the district, flipping it over and giving them a possible solution so that there was something of substance that they would be receiving. I also met people through chats. I, I'm in the community. Once, once a month, I try to be in each of the, the, um, the neighborhoods. Neighborhood board meetings, sure. And neighborhood board meetings as well. Um, and, and when I met people in various condos, uh, and if they had, especially this transit accom accommodations um, and people being really concerned about rentals that are less than 180 days, I would take my treasurer. Jane Sugimura, I call her the condo queen. <laughs> I would take her, and, and it would be terrific because she could She's answer great. every question that they had. And, and that's one way of educating condo dwellers because they had a lot of questions, and they, they had no place to go the, the to The condo ask, animal is right? a very complex animal. Yeah. You know? So it, I, I think the, what I hope to do if and when I get elected is to be out there in the community, have these kinds of um, sessions if people are interested. But I am planning to be in the community once a month. And in, in, um, in fact, I have places I found, margaritas in, in <laughs> Makali, <laughs> Ili, Ili yeah. um, Waikiki cheeseburger yeah. in Waikiki and Kaka'ako. Social Ako, experience. You know? yeah. yeah, you just sit there for an hour on a Saturday at a given time and people who have concerns can just come and meet me. Gosh, that reminds you know? me of Frank Fossey. Huh? That's what I'm going to do. Sit in, in Theo's back in, oh, yeah. back in the day. See, the I'm going to do that. Young building. Back to the people future. Would come, yeah, yeah, they would come and talk to him, and he would talk to them. What a wonderful idea that is. No kidding. Yeah, because yeah. because I think people are, you know, they say, oh, come to my office. Well, who's going to go up to the Capitol and try to find parking, right? So, so in the community, it's my community as well as their community that, you know, we, we have a chat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, so you know. what a wonderful idea, Sharon. I said, that'll really be special. Um, so, you know, what, what issues did you find they cared about? I, I know you covered a lot of issues. You took a lot of positions on many issues. Um, but what, what were the ones that Number surfaced? one is everywhere across the state, housing that people can afford. Housing. It's housing. Even when you look at the homeless issue, it's housing. I mean, they're homeless because there's no housing. So that has to be the number one issue. Mm. And it's across the board. They, they may come in different forms in, in the three districts, but you know whether it's not 
you know, having to work three jobs to keep my rental or having to have some low-cost loans so I can fix up my, my home, um, that, that's all relates to housing. And affordable housing so people can keep their kids here. They're all going. We, we, we are the one state, Sun Belt state that has lost population. And that's unusual. And, you know, for, for, for any Sun Belt state to lose population, yeah, Terrible, we are. terrible. Because, you know, yeah. the, the human capital is the most important capital we have. And we train them and then they go they and go. We, we, lose, we lose all the benefit we might have from them. And it's more than the brain drain. Uh, Dave Heenan wrote a book called Flight Capital. And when you're talking about capital, you're talking about human capital. Mm -hmm. uh, and Hawaii, is, uh, Hawaii losing, has that yeah. problem. And not only that, if, if you know, the, the legislature said, oh, well, they gave you know, um, um, 200 million to build 1,600 rentals. Well, you know, we need 18,000, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? That it's got to be that amount every single year for the next 10, 11 years. Yeah. And, and that it's not only rentals. I think we have to help people, as Peter Savia says, rent to build equity. Because if you have a rental, your salary could go up, but so does the rent. And so you don't have that kind of discretionary income. But yeah. if you rent to own, then that, that mortgage that you're paying you're building equity. is you're building equity. Yeah, yeah. So you, and you have a more stable community. So, yeah. So I really want to push that as a major, major issue yeah. that we have right. to solve. And Kaka'aka is a great laboratory for this. It, it is the center of the city. It is the new city, if you will. Um, it is a laboratory. Uh, it is a place where these issues can and should be tested because there'll be other communities like Kaka'aka elsewhere. Mm -hmm. We should learn all the lessons we can learn from Kaka'aka and apply them elsewhere. So you're in a, really in a perfect spot to invent you know, to shape the new Honolulu from where you are. It's really an important um, place. So what, what happens from here now? We, we're um, just going into September. There's September, there's October, and boop, there's Election Day <laughs> I know, I know. in November. Yeah, I, so the big challenge for me was, was the primary, of course, because I was, um, I was up against a 10-year incumbent. So, of course... You know, that, that was very, very challenging. Uh, and, Incumbents and so, always have an advantage. Yeah, they have they? a big advantage. Name recognition. Yeah. They've got all the connections to, um, to uh, the money. Uh, they have connections to um, a lot of resources. Um, and, and I was, you know, basically building the grass, you know, <laughs> planting the grassroots, you know, yeah. uh, at that level with people and relating to people, as, as we discussed earlier. But there's still two months left, and I do have a Republican opponent, so I'm not taking it for granted. Or you know, and I, I really need to continue, at not at that kind of intense pace that we had, but certainly I'm continuing to campaign. Uh, we will have a fundraiser uh, so that we can, in fact, continue to send our message out um, of hope, change, uh, and that we will be representing we the people and not those that are only, only those that are connect, well connected. So that message has to go out that, that I'm here to represent my district, all of them. Yeah. Well, I was telling you before the show, that's my perception of why you are different than a lot of people who run for office and who hold office, because you really do represent the people. You don't represent special interest groups. Uh, you represent the right. And uh, that's, that's impressive and refreshing, I might add. That should be the model that all our legislative candidates follow. And, and when elected, they follow in, in the legislature. So this is really special. I, I, are you able to get that message across to people? Because it's a little sophisticated to say, I, I'm different. Mm. I'm different because I really represent you. I see myself as your agent. And there's a certain purity involved in that. Yeah. I mean, I think people want to have hope that, I mean, a lot of people say, I'm not voting because it doesn't really make a difference. And, you know, and, and others say, you know, when I vote for you and you get in, are you still going to remember me? And they'll be like the others. I mean, the, the people are frustrated with, with government and government not representing them, you know, and they, that they get jaundiced about it, frustrated about it. So I really promise and pledge 
that I will represent the people. And that, that is my pledge from day one to whenever they put me out, because I'm not representing their interests anymore, and they've moved on. But, but I'm not, I don't feel that I'm entitled to this position, like I tell them. We are working for the people, because it's your tax dollars, when I should get in, that pay for me. So you should be looking at what I do and my performance, like any other employer. And if you say, Sharon, hey, you know, you're not doing the job for we the people, then boot me out, right? <laughs> I'm not paying your salary anymore. I want to get some other employee. I don't, I, I really think that, that we've forgotten that it's the other way around. It's not we have to go up to the Capitol and talk to the senator. It's like they have to come talk to me, the idea, taxpayer. I, I right? a lovely idea. I mentioned that. Lovely idea. So that really resonates for me. I, I, you know, a lot of times you find you're represented by somebody you don't even know, and you never get to see that person. And um, you know, it's high on a hill somewhere, but not not in your neighborhood really. You're different, and uh, that's 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 wonderful. And I hope that other people find the same way to achieve that sort of proximity to the voters. One other thing is, you know, so this year you changed your life. I did. <laughs> you know, you were in the university did, for a long yeah, time. I, you were uh, running the Energy Policy Forum for a long time. A long time. You were dealing with a, a, a fairly large group of people, uh, you know, stakeholders in the energy community, and all of a sudden stop, you run for <laughs> office, and, and then you changed your life. And then you ran successfully for this primary for the past six months. It was really something to watch. All that energy I saw happening <laughs> in the Energy Policy Forum was now <laughs> happening, you know, in your candidacy. <clears throat> okay, so here we are. It's uh, uh, you know the end of August, almost September, and I and I have a question. Okay. <laughs> you've been through a lot. I have. You you you've had life you see how altering. Oh, no, you look great to me. You look wonderful, actually. <laughs> uh, maybe you relaxed after after the primary election day, but but. Uh, how have you changed? I don't you must think I've be changed. introspective. Have you changed? No. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. It's the same me. A little, a little. Um, I think. I, I think I'm the same me. <laughs> what What I think has changed is my my perspective because I talk to so many people just like you and me out in the community. And you know, when you're at the university, it's not ivory tower so much because the kind of work we did was, you know, well, partnerships you were, you were with the outreach public. from day one. Yeah. yeah. But but it's and but it was wonky people, right? people in business, <laughs> in, in industry, uh, and in the renewable energy sector. You, <laughs> but and I've and, and that. it's and then it's policy development. Uh, but these are people who are struggling with their life. They're they're working two jobs but they but others like I met a doctor she wants you know to, to do more in the community and um, uh, this couple that I met that you know like the, the my, my theme is let's care for each other how can we do more of that and they have some ideas and some programs I mean it's how do you make the connections of these people who are such really energizing and and um, um, real Kinds of contributions that they want to make, and they've never made that connection. It's empower, with yes. empowerment, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So, empowering the people. So, so I want to work on that. I want to really see how that connection connect more of the dots between a, people and government. It's a study in democracy, which is very important in our time, to fully appreciate how it works. You know. Mm -hmm. So I, I can visualize you there in your office. Knock wood. <laughs> yeah, Knock wood. Well, wait, wait, wait. Let's not count wait, our wait, chickens. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> count our chickens, but uh -huh. I can visualize you, and um, I can visualize people coming to talk to you, and you going out to talk to them. Um, but I wonder if you have a thought, an ideation, about w what it will be like, what it would be like, should you win the, the general. What sort of senator would you be? What sort of uh, agenda would you have? I know housing would be one of those things. Energy would definitely be one of those things. And the elderly having the them elderly, age in place. Uh, okay, yeah. talk Does about that, the, that, will you? Well, that's about fifty-six percent of my district are elderly, sixty-five and older, and and many want to stay at home, live at home. But you know, your your health goes. 
and we've got to find ways in which we can support that in a, in a bigger way so that you can help them stay at home and, and live their life fully at, and their own homes and, and familiar surroundings. So working on that, um, I just talked to Senator Hihara today, and he's, he's, um, you know, he has this Kupuna caucus. And, and so talking with him about the possibilities of what kinds of things we can do to support the elderly more, to be more vibrant in their older years, their aging years, uh, and to make it much more fulfilling, even if you, you know, you're in the autumn of your yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's such an important because the, demo, the demographics are changing. Uh, regrettably, a lot of the young people are leaving, leaving, you know, the Kapuna to fend for themselves in many ways. Uh, somebody has got to take care of them because the economy is tough on them. You know, things are more expensive. Housing is more expensive. Um, the dollar doesn't go as far and so forth. <clears throat> and it's really important to, to create a state that will take care of them. Um, and so, you know, one more question along the same line. Um, what, what kind of a state would you like to see us have? What kind of state? Yeah. Well, as, as I say, with my motto, it's caring for each other. Uh, this is which returning has, to other times, yes, earlier times. Yeah, when earlier perhaps, times when we did. I, when we I think did. We, we cared for the least of us. And how can we do that in a more equitable way, in a way that... We can still have a vibrant economy, but that economy then takes for the, and, and appropriates for those who, who are you know, in need of help. Mm. The homeless, the disabled, you know, and, and we haven't quite gotten that equation right. You know? well, well, some people so. think we've lost that equation. <laughs> Maybe yeah. you can help us regain that equation. Hey? But the, the, one, the other thing is infrastructure. Everything is aging, not only people, but you know, our, our whole, um, like in Kaka'aka, we feel that we've got the, the drain system, the sewers, the, the storm drains are, you know, when it rains, it's we can see, oh, Kaka it's very, yeah. yeah. And, and I think it's across my district. It's the Makali Mo'ili Ili, Waikiki, you know, and, and the, the environment, the uh, shoreline, you know, and how we're overbuilding on the shoreline. So having to look at that and carrying capacity and, seeing what can be done. Um, one figure I know is $17 billion a year comes in from tourists. Uh, Waikiki uh, gets only $7 billion of that, and they generate a lot of it. So why can't we get more in to build up the infrastructure in this area, this urban core, that is so central to our generating a, a strong economy? And why not? Um, invest sure. in what, what is this really is precious. The to engine people. that drives our economy, yeah. Yeah. we should take care of it. We should so invest we should in care it. For, uh, we, yeah. should not, we should not marginalize it in any way. Um, one other thing that comes to mind, you mentioned Senator Ihara, and of course I know him too, but I'm thinking that over the years, especially the years you've spent in the Energy Policy Forum, uh, and because of the legislative briefings you've done on an annual basis and sometimes more often, um, you know, you know, you know the legislature. You know the longstanding members. You know, you know the Senate pretty well. Um, how does that help you in terms of doing what you want to do? Um, how do you see your, mm, you know, your social engagement among the existing members of the state Senate? Well, I don't know the internal workings of the Senate yet. <laughs> I do know um, my relationships with senators as we had had issues and and I've been able to get along with most of them and able to get some of the bills that we thought were very energy important bills back. for example energy yeah. bills and 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 so um, I think my position on and and real value is looking at collaboration looking at how we can get along with everybody so so everybody can't get everything they want but let's work together, and I'm going to push that as, as my, my approach to um, getting things done in the Senate. There, there may be um, internal workings that I'm not aware of just yet, but I'm hoping that everybody's there for the, the same reason. We want to make Hawaii the best place that we can, so, so I'm looking at mutual interest in, in getting the work of the people. I, I really like to hear you say that because... You know, when you were with the Energy Policy Forum, you know, that's, that's what you were doing. 
you were getting people together to collaborate in a sweet way. And all friends here, we all work together. For years and years, I mean, it was really quite something. It has been quite something. Uh, and now you can do it again. You can do it in the Senate. Where I hope so. It's <laughs> very important. But the other thing is that you just alluded to it a minute ago, is that you worked on energy bills for however many, 15 or 20 years, um, and you saw, you saw the bills being drafted. You saw them being revised and amended, passed or not passed, however the case may be, with testimony and all the data coming in whatnot. Um, so you know the legislative process. Of course, you know, it's, it's energy, but it's much more than that because you saw the process happening in so many, in so many ways. That's got to help you, uh, uh, being a senator, to facilitate this collaboration and therefore, uh, you know, the passage of good legislation, no? I hope so. I really do hope so. I, I, I am hopeful um, that that there, there will be that kind of dialogue among my colleagues, that we all want the same thing uh, and, and in different ways and different committees, but that there is this mutual respect for serving the people of the state. Mm. Well, I know you've been in the media a lot. You, <laughs> Recently, yes. <laughs> you know, your, your success in the primary has been covered by many, shocking, many media. A shocking success. Really a wonderful <laughs> surprise, a delight. A, a, new, a new face, a new entry into the Senate, uh, Senate campaign. And um, I'm so delighted you came down here and talked to me. So thank you, Sharon. Wish you well in, in the two months to follow. Thank you. And I hope we can have another show soon. Soon. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me, Jay. It's always a pleasure. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs>